mama. How do you like it? How do you like it? Hey, what's up, guys? What up? All right, so it's Ron Pascal here with Y Intellectuals, and I pretty much, I really wanted to put this out because I know there's a lot of kids out there who, you know, they were just like me. They're pretty bright, but, you know, they just never had that older person to show them the ropes, you know. Uh, I wasn't always an A student, and, you know, I was in all honors, you know, I was a pretty smart kid, but I never really got straight A's or took anything seriously, and I always wanted to know how to do it, you know, what's the difference between me and that kid who's valedictorian, you know, why why am I not getting those, the grades that I should be, and I decided to put this together to show you how I went from that kid who's getting D's, D pluses, and C minuses, to that kid who's getting A minuses, A's, and A pluses, and I break it down here, so let's just get into it. So pretty much background, I'm from Boston, Massachusetts, and I went to Framingham State University, right? It's a school which is 30 minutes out. Uh, it's pretty cool. Had a lot of fun there. And I got a degree in biotechnology, which is extremely hard, right? N name it, I've done it. Organic chem, the hardest class in college, passed out on the first try. Uh, molecular biology, genetics, cellular biology, uh, recombinant DNA, vascular plant taxonomy. You know, I took all these crazy classes, molecular biology, you name it. I took, I took them all. And pretty much it was very hard, very tough. You know, a lot of people complain about one lab. They're like, holy shit, like one lab. I couldn't pass. It's so hard, blah. Like, dude, I took fucking 12 labs, 14, 16 labs, right? Don't talk to me about labs. I am a lab. Literally, I'm a lab just by how much I've been in that motherfucking place. So, if you're complaining about one lab, I feel you. I feel you, boo-boo. Like, that's kind of hard. But I took 14, 16 of those, and I was a dumbass kid. So, you know, you got you to gotta, you gotta toughen up a little bit. Toughen up a little bit. But, like, a little bit more background about me. If, if you look on the right, you'll see I'm with this uh, lovely Asian woman that's a good friend of mine. And uh, a backpack, an Adidas backpack over my head walking around the campus and this just I just wanted to put these pictures in to just show you the kind of kid I was um like I said before like I'm a like I'm a smart dude you know I'm not I'm not stupid you know I took honors before but I had dumb habits you know what I mean like I like I just never took anything too seriously and I was smart enough like in on like I didn't take AP classes in high school but I took like honor stuff and I didn't really have to study at all. You know, I would just show up for the for the exam or whatever and be like, oh, it was an exam. And I will just take it and, hey, whatever I get, I get. And it was usually something good, like an 85 and up. So I'm like, hey, fuck it, I'll just take the 85. I never really had to work for shit until, until college, until the bio uh, stuff kicked in. So I never did shit. I was just lazy as fuck. The kids I was cool with, I was cool with, the, you know, the, I'm with the cool kids. We're skipping class. Like, I never really did shit, right? I thought I was too cool to be prepared. It's like, pff, print out notes. I don't need to print out notes. I don't need to show up to, to class in time. I don't need to, like, have the syllabus. Like, I never was, like, on that shit. I didn't even, I never printed out the syllabus and looked at the syllabus before class. Like, I didn't prepare my notes. I didn't even have the book. I never had, like, anything. I was just that kid showing up, you know, with my furry fucking hat, my furry animal hat from H&M that was, like, $22, and I would sit in the fucking back of the class texting uh, girls about, you know, stuff, you know, and I was, I was just a shitty student, you know, I, I barely passed exams, I failed a lot of tests, and I was actually, you know, what's really funny is, um, this is how I knew, like, deep down, like, I wasn't really that stupid, because I would literally fail, I would, like, do half the homeworks, let's say there's, like, six homeworks, I would do, like, two of them, and get, like, 40s and 60s on every quiz, and fit, almost fail every test, like, there'd be three exams, and I'd, like, you know, I get like a 70 on the first one, a 30 on the second one, and like 50 on the third one. So like I, my grades are just shitty as fuck. I'm looking at a D minus. And because the final is like my only chance of like survival, because if you get if you get lower than a C minus, you don't pass the class, right? Uh, once you're in the major, I would study a, study for like three, four days and get like a 96 on the, fin on the, on the final. And literally, my professors would be like, kid, if you got 96 in the final, why didn't you just do that 
for like everything and get an A in the class. And that I did that didn't make sense to me. I'm like, what? Like what that has nothing to do with girls, so I don't know what you're talking about. Like <laughs> Like if it wasn't about girls and chilling, I didn't know what you were talking about. Or or a little bit of basketball, because I was into basketball at the time. But that's pretty much how I was, man. Like I just didn't I barely passed stuff. You know, I took that high school mentality of being too cool, not really doing shit into college and I just got fucking destroyed. Uh, really bad, so, like, it's, it just comes down to a mindset, this is really for just, this video is for kids who, who, you know, they want to get good grades, they want to, like, they want to just, like, like, succeed in this shit, in academia, but they just don't know how, you know what I mean, they, they don't have that older brother or, like, older person to show them, like, hey, this is how you do it, because no one, no one's gonna have the time of day to show you, so it's tough, you know, you don't think, it's possible and you kind of just like float by you know like I a thing about me I always thought it was innate I thought it was intrinsic like it was in you like if you got an A it was because you were a little bit smarter or you were an A student and if you got a C it's because like you were kind of less smart than that A kid and you kind of like didn't take the APs and like you just weren't as smart as that kid so you know you got it you just got a C just because like you know that kid's a little bit smarter than you and that's so fucking stupid and dumb and bullshit and trash and just dumb you're if you think like that which i thought like for for a long time you you're limiting yourself and you're you're just a lazy fuck okay it's not true just because i don't want to that's actually a little bit jaded i'm not trying to label people uh you're not a lazy fuck but understand that there that's not necessarily true um Literally, it's not. The only difference between you and that person is the mindset and the methods that you used uh, to get your grade. That's it. It's just the way you look at it and how you do it. Okay? An example would be uh, trying to suck up every point. That's a mindset that I used. Now, before I wasn't like that. You know, I didn't look at points as, you know, lifeblood. I wasn't like, oh, I need to get every single point. Like, if I got an 80, I'd be like, fuck it, I got an 80. I got a 70. Fuck it. You know, top top there was a kid named Chris in my class you know we're sitting together and I never I don't even think I ever got a 90 before I forgot which class this was but I don't even, I don't even think I got a 90 before in that class I got like like 71 and you know he would be like fuck I got a 94 I wish I got a 97 and I'm like kid why are you fucking bitching about a 94 like a 94 is good like take it it's a fucking 94 but that was me being ignorant. I didn't understand what he meant. That mindset of I want to improve better and see what I did wrong and fix that is what got him the 94. It, you know what I mean? It's I want to improve this. Why didn't I get more? What do I need to change? What do I need to do to get a higher grade? It's it's Kaizen. It's it's I want to improve. You know, it's it's just constant. It's like Jiro. Have you ever watched the movie uh, Jiro the Sushi? Uh, uh, master, it's about this guy who's just always making the best sushi, he's making the perfect sushi, he's always tweaking it and tweaking it and tweaking it, and people spend thousands of dollars, you know, you got you actually, to eat at this restaurant, um, you actually have to book it a month in advance, book your reservation, because that's how good the sushi is, he's always trying to improve, you know, and like these top level kids, they're doing that too, choking and choking and choking it, how can I improve, how can I improve, how can I improve, I got a 96, fuck, why the fuck did I get a 96, I should have got a 99, what do I need to fix? You know, these kids think like that. Me, I'm just like, oh, shit, got a 70. Ha, <laughs> whatever. Girls, girls, girls. Hat, furry hat. Like, what the hell are you doing, dude? So, like, that's the mentality I'm talking about. You got to change your mentality. So, that's what I, I started learning. And the other thing was the methods I used to get the top grades. My study habits, how I structured my time, what I did with my time in class, um, how I tracked my points. Like, my methods as a shitty student were not the same as my methods in uh, as a, as a higher level, higher performing student, literally the difference between me coming in as like that shitty kid with the fucking Furby hat in the back texting girls, uh, hung over off some fucking cheap Rubinoff or, or natural ice, whatever the fuck, you know, I, I drank at that time, um, was my mindset towards the curriculum, the course, the professors, how I should view my work and the methods I use to secure uh, good grades and what's funny is actually I started getting better grades doing less work with these new mindsets and these new methods um, which I'll get into later 
So, like, more, like, I'm still a dumbass. Like, dude, I'm literally, like, I'm not, my family knows this, too, because I read a lot of books. You guys know I read a lot of books, like, every day, but I'll still do something mad fucking stupid. Like, I'm still, I'm still a dumbass dude. Like, don't get me wrong. Don't let the books fool you. I still like to have fun sometimes. But the point is, I got the same grades as they did, and sometimes even better. Like, you can still... You can, if you take this mentality and you take these methods, you can still get the grades that they get, or you can even get better grades than they can, and that means a lot. So if I can do it, because I'm not the brass dude, trust me, then you you can do it as well. So like that's that's the my I, I just wanted to really 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 make that be known because I know a lot of kids. They're like, you know, I'm not really that type of dude. I'm not, especially with the science, they kind of feel intimidated. Like, oh, I'm not really, because I'm not really like a nerdy dude. Like, I'm not like collecting frogs in my spare time and like fucking like collecting mice and shit. I'm not doing that. I'm not like classifying plants in my spare time. I'm in the club, like classifying chicks, but, or in my room classifying books. <laughs> but still, like, you can do this too. So I really want to put, if you have like, like at least three of these and you're you're not doing as well as you should have you you should be okay so if you go to class late you're not you're not doing it right if you don't do every homework assignment you're not doing it right if you're studying for exams the night before you're not doing it right okay if you sit in the back you're not doing it right at all you're actually doing it extremely wrong and you're gonna procrastinate and you're just gonna fucking you're just really 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 shooting yourself in the foot if you don't take detailed notes, you're doing it wrong. If you thought you can pass without like knowing every single detail, you're just done. And if you're waiting till last second to cram, like don't even try. You're gonna fail. Okay? Especially for the sciences. Organic chem, you try studying the night before, you're done. Okay, let me tell you a story about organic chem. This is a little aside, but it's pretty funny. So literally, I go to my professor and I'm like, hey dude, uh, I don't get this and it doesn't make sense. He pulls me aside and he goes, Ron. This isn't supposed to make sense, okay? You can figure it all out now, and two, three years from now, it could all change, Ron. And I'm like, dude, you're not supposed to tell me that. Like, you're supposed, like, that makes me not even motivated to do it. What do you mean organic chemistry is not supposed to make sense? He's like, yeah, not and like, you know, that's how hard the class was. And people would try to, if the professor's saying it doesn't make sense, you're not going to make sense of it the night before the exam. I don't give a, I don't care what you think your capabilities are. I mean, maybe some kids can, maybe some kids are like, you know, 160 IQ Jimmy Neutrons, but I'm no Jimmy Neutron. Okay. I went to a state school and I know if you're going, you're not, I, I assume you're not a Jimmy Neutron either. Right. You're not Stephen Hawking. You know, I knew I wasn't Stephen Hawking for sure. So don't study the night before, please. Okay. So, like, these are the bad habits. If you go to class late, you're just dumb because the teacher sees that. Uh, you know, the teacher's like, all right, this kid's coming in late every day. Why do I want to help him? I'm not going to pull him aside and give him some tips. Like, hey, kid, like, this is, this is what you need to study. I'm not going to give him those tips because the kid comes in late every day. I'm not going to take him seriously. All right, if you don't do every homework assignment, you're dumb because the homework assignments are actually the gimme points. You know, if you... What I used to do as a student was I would just get shitty grades on the homeworks and then just do, like, really good on the final. That doesn't work. The homeworks are the freebie points. Do good on every single homework. That way, if you do really bad on the exam, you get an 80, you still walk out with an A- minus in the class, you know? And you know the, the material for the exam better because the homeworks are just, you know, the exam is just made up of a bunch of homeworks and quizzes. That's really all an exam is. So, like, doing hard, just doing your best in the homeworks actually makes the exam easier and the final and gets you a higher grade, right? It's a complete paradox. Um, sitting in the back of the class, you know, I went over this before, you're just dumb, you know. You can't pay attention. You're going to be on your phone. You're going to be on Twitter. Back, back in the day, it was Twitter and, and I think a little bit of Facebook. Now it's just everything. There's Pinterest. There's, uh, like, everything. Instagram, you're done now. There's so much more stuff on your phone. You don't sit in the back. Uh, don't take if you don't take detailed notes, you're literally um, the problem is when you're taking an exam, it's the the teacher's not trying to they're not putting you through that to see how much like they they don't want you to spit the information back to them. You know, some of them are different. I know that, but an exam is pretty much how much you know the information in your own way. 
you know so if you taking down notes is important because it's like it's you communicating to yourself how you view that uh subject problem etc you know it's your own unique way of breaking that information down in a way that you can recall it easily and go over later on that's what a note like that's why i don't even like looking at other people's notes to be real with you because that's their model of looking at it my model is completely different you know sometimes i use images sometimes i like to use metaphors and you know everyone learns differently some people learn visually some people learn auditorily some people learn kinesthetically like people learn different so me looking at someone else's notes is kind of foolish because that's their interpretation of that information and mine isn't always the same so if you're not going to class on time and you're not taking detailed notes that way you can just recall them later on for the exam then you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot first day just take the detailed notes while you're there that way you don't have to look through the book later and try to figure it all out because some professors don't even use the book you know they like their um uh problems answered in the way that they convey that information to you and sometimes the books are outdated sometimes the book is actually incorrect so you have to take detailed notes okay and you have to actually know the class like you can't and a lot of kids do this trust me a lot of kids do this like there's this girl in my chemistry class. She kind of knew like how chemistry works. She kind of knew reactions. She kind of knew limiting reagents. And she kind of passed. You know, it really does reflect your grades. You can't just kind of know shit and expect to pass. You know, if I want to pass um, molecular biology, I have to actually know molecular biology. You know, I have to actually know how the proteins work. I have to actually know how the DNA is transcribed. I have to actually know the central dogma, DNA, RNA, translating the protein. I have to know shit. You can't just, like, kind of, like, vaguely know it and expect to pass the class. You're not. So you really need to start paying attention. And you can't wait till the last second. We went over that before. Um, you can't, okay? So, like, my mentality was, like, it's just so stupid. You know, I'm like, all right, like... I, th I thought I can just get the degree, like, oh, I'm just going to get the degree because, you know, it's just college. No, bro, it's not just college. You have to actually know about, like, you can't get a biology degree without knowing biology, right? It sounds so simple, but trust me, it's not. It really isn't because people don't understand that, you know, some people try to cheat, you know, cheat your way. You can't cheat your way through four years. I mean, some people can, and, like, those people are actually pretty smart, um, but... At the same time, cause I think there's an art to cheating. I think cheating, because cheating is very difficult. It's not easy to do so. So some people are really creative at that. Uh, but uh, I never did, because in bio, it's actually harder to cheat. If Because, number one, the teacher will know you don't know your info, and you don't write like that, because they know the way you look at information. And number two, you, you would have to Google everything. It'll take you longer to finish the exam, because it's, it's time constrained. So you can't cheat. And plus Siri, you know, Siri's going to fucking ask you about, like, what you, what do you, want, what are you wearing? You know, you're trying to cheat. You're, you're smashing on the home button. And Siri's like, hey, <laughs> what was that you said while you're fucking in, a, in the middle of an exam? That's a nightmare. Fuck that. But, like, literally you have to know the actual subjects. You have to actually know biology if you want to get a biology degree. Okay? I, you got to fight to understand everything. And, you know, I mentioned that before, like, you have to know every, how everything works. You have to know how everything works. Um, it's just the only, you have to know the whys. You have to know why everything works. Why would it, why would it not work? When will it not work? Um, how is this information true? How is it false? You have to know everything about it, right? Um, you, you have to explain the information fully. You can't just vaguely get it. It's the same as before. And you got to actually prepare for class. Okay, so, like, my mentality was just stupid, you know what I mean? Like, I never showed up prepared for anything. I never really, like, thought I, I needed to know everything. I never, I tried to cut corners, you know. I never really did any, any homework assignment. I didn't really, like, try to explain the information, like, as, as concise as I can. I kind of just, like, kind of, like, threw it out there, which is, which is just horrible. So pretty much, you know, everyone knows if you keep doing this, you're going to be fucked. You're not going to make it. You probably will fail a class and have to take a summer class, a couple summer classes, or even like just fail out or straight up just have to do another like year or two. And, you know, I was at that, that the crossroads of either I'm going to have to take mad summer classes and 
you know, get A's in these classes or um, do a couple extra years or literally just get a straight A from now on in every fucking class. And that's what I did. I literally did that. Um, and, and it's, I had to, I kind of had to, because what's interesting about this was not only did I have to get the straight A's, what was also crazy is that the material was getting harder as well. Like I'm moving up, you know, if you're moving up freshman to sophomore, sophomore to junior, junior to senior, the, the information's getting harder and harder and harder and harder and harder as you progress. You know, I did it, I did it all stupidly. Um, so I had no choice. So I got my shit together. Like, that's me on the left with the, my molecular biology book. Um, you know, there's me on the right with the organic chemistry book. Go to Red Bull, of course. Uh, just banging out some information, banging out some some problems in the books. And, you know, I had to get my shit together. And pretty much, like, you know, what I did was, I'm going to tell you guys everything I did to get my shit together. How I turned everything around and became just, like, this fucking stud crushing it. Uh, you know, a, a lot of ki- a lot of professors, I know they use me as an example because I used to have horrible scientific writing. They'd be like, look, you know, if you want to learn how to write, you got to actually do these things I'm going to tell you to do. You know, a good example of this is Ron, Ron Pascal. You know, I had students come up to me, tell me, oh, like we, we heard about you and all the class professor was talking about you. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I worked my ass off, you know. Uh, so I'm just going to talk about just like everything I did, you know, how I did it. Um and pretty much we'll start with this like you have to actually know your shit i'm going to bring that back up again because that's super important i know a lot of a lot of kids and they try to cut corners they try to adderall it i mean that could work mind you can't adderall your brain out forever trust me it's it's just not it's not going to always work for you you know you got to when it, at the end of the day if you're going to work for this or you really want to build a career out of this then you have to actually know the shit right you have to actually know how shit works okay you know, in A+, plus, that means you just know everything that you're talking about and the professor approves of it. The professor approves of you knowing your shit. You know, some professors aren't aren't bright. I'm not trying to disrespect any professors, but some of them, we all know that some of them don't really, you know, uh, review exactly how much you know. You know, some of them just, just kind of just give stuff out and then, you know, you can get an easy A. But a lot of the other ones, there are some who do not tolerate that at all. And for those professors, you really have to actually know your shit and actually know how to convey it in a way that makes sense to both of you. And, you know, if you don't know everything in great details, you probably won't get a high grade, you know? If you don't know how every little thing works and why, it's going to be tough for you to get a good grade. I'm sorry. Like, you could still come out with a B- minus or a B, but I'm talking about A, a students here. The top students want to know everything and how it all works, okay? And... You know, <laughs> I want to throw this in there. If you kind of know shit, you kind of will get a good grade, you know. I lived by that for a couple of years. Uh, not the best uh, motto, but it's true. You kind of know shit, hey, you're going to kind of get a good grade, okay. So, you know, what I really did was I befriended the smartest kids, okay. I took, I talked with them. I compared notes with them. I would see what they did and what I didn't do and try to learn that. I would, I just, I just saw how they moved, like, they became my, you know, really good friends, uh, you know, I just brought them into my life, and what's cool about it is, once you bring these people into your life, your whole life changes, not because of, I want to learn from them, but because they actually help you, and you just see all your flaws, they're like, look, dude, you need to look at this, bro, why are you doing it in this way, and, you just see their mindset, like, they stress out about the littlest things that, like, no one cares about, I'm like, dude, you have a 92, why are you stressing out about that, or, you know, a buddy of mine, he actually won, we have a conference, it's called the, it's a, called the Methods Conference, and it's about, just like, we did a year study of, on Huntington's disease, Drosophila, uh, you know, little fruit flies around bananas, we actually um, ordered some with Huntington's disease, it's like a deadly disorder, uh, you're completely immobilized, you can't move, like, you're all fucked up, and your brain just fucking melts, it deteriorates, and we did a study on that, and, you know, some of my flies, like, I didn't really count them all, I didn't really feed them all, I'm like, yo, fuck it, like, they're still moving, so they're fucking alive, like, I never really checked how many were alive, but Chris was different, like, my buddy Chris, he was the kid who, um, uh, was, like, my partner, you know, we weren't really partners, but we kind of worked on a similar project, you know, I did mine on, like, 
a different substance than he, him and we kind of worked together and and the thing is he he would be like dude like no i gotta count everything i gotta count every fly i gotta make sure everything's all right you know we worked there you know from three to nine at nine i'm like dude all right it's club time i gotta go gotta go to the girls and he's like nah dude i'm gonna stay here i'm gonna stay here and work on these flies you know i'm like dude what the fuck's wrong with you fuck that we, we already spent six hours i'm going out you know the next day He's like, yeah, dude, I stayed there till 1230 till the police kicked me out. And, um, you know, I'm going to do the same thing tonight till I get it. And I'm like, dude, you're going to do that tonight? He's like, yeah. And what's funny is the difference between him and I was this kid actually ended up winning the whole fucking methods conference. He actually ended up winning the whole conference because he fought for everything, every little point. Whenever there was a problem, we ran out of a tank. He would be like, dude, we got to get a new tank, and he'd get a new tank. He was just on top of his shit and knew everything. And being around someone like that just motivates you to be more on top of your shit, you know? And that, that osmosis, just hanging out with him, really, really, really did help me with my grades and help me with my outlook and help me with my study habits and everything, you know? Um, and you can accomplish this with a tutor too. Like, here's my tutors for organic chem, uh, Caitlin and, and I, let's just call him beard dude. My, my man beard dude over here. Uh, he has a very nice beard. Like these, these guys literally help me all the time. You know, I would, I would show up once a week, twice a week, eight o'clock in the morning to nine, tell them about my, you know, club adventures or my girl adventures or uh, whatever, and then they would exchange with me, you know, we'd talk, and then they'd help me with the organic chem, you know, this easily helped me, like, you know, I would, I would get, like, 80 on a quiz, it'd be like, guys, I got an 80, uh, exam's coming up, I want to make sure I get a, get a 90 in the exam, can you help me out, and they'd be like, sure, and they would show me what to do, you know, when I was a, a poor level student, I wasn't doing shit like that, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't have tutors, and, like, I didn't, I didn't prepare for shit, I wasn't really, like, help talking with people smarter than me, asking for advice about shit. I wasn't doing that, and that's dumb. You want to you wanna put yourself in, in a position where someone who already knows information really well can break it down to you in a simple way, okay? And that's awesome. You know, befriend the smartest kids in, in the fucking class, right? Have conversations with them. Get lunch with them. Talk about it with them. Uh, just be around them and see how they move and do the same thing with the tutors, you know? Just be around these motherfuckers. So, you know, I, I hammered in about about sitting in the front before. I'm going to bring it up again. You guys need to sit in the front, okay? And a big reason why I, I'm telling you to sit in the fucking front is because you, you pay attention. You're forced to pay attention the whole time, okay? I actually got worse grades, literally, from sitting in the back. And it's not because I wasn't taking notes or anything. It's because literally you're wasting time because you're in class not that time you're not in class paying attention you have to make up for it outside of class right and that time you make for outside of the class will be longer than what it would have been if you just tried to pay attention in class because the professionals in front of you the professor professional okay the professor who is in charge of giving you professional information on the subject is giving you and consulting with you and will answer questions to that material if you don't know it. You trying to learn it on your own through digesting information through the book will take a longer time because you are not a professor. You're not a professional. You're a student. Okay? So would you rather spend an hour trying to learn it on your own outside of class or spend 15 minutes asking questions to the teacher, having them convey the information to you? Okay, so pay attention during the whole time in class. Sit in the front. Force yourself to sit in the front because, listen, if you don't sit in the front, you sit in the back, you're going to be that kid who's like, should I go out tonight or should I do my assignment? And that's a dumb kid. You don't want to be that kid who doesn't know shit and you want to go out. Just You want to be that kid who has it all done so he can fucking go out, right? You don't have to give up going out to do shit. The kids who give up going out to, like, do assignments, those kids, like, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to offend anyone, but those kids aren't doing it right. I went out every night, and I still had all my shit done, okay? Pay attention while you're in class. Sit in the fucking front, please, okay? Ask questions, participate, 
you know, you sitting in the front, the teacher's going to like you, the teacher's going to give you more brownie points, the teacher's going to look to you as a person to go to, to answer questions, and you're going to be forced to be on your game more. And when you're on your game more, trust me, baby, that momentum's going, you're going to start crushing exams, crushing quizzes, crushing homeworks. Sit in the fucking front, okay? And what's cool is if you pay attention, the test should already be answered through your participation. And what that means is, by you sitting in the front, consulting with the teacher, uh, asking questions about things you don't know about, uh, those hard questions that come up during the exam, you kind of have a good feeling about them because, you know, you were actively participating in the class, okay? And, you know, here's another thing, use your time wisely, and again, this is with, like, just paying attention in class, pay attention during the whole time, don't do the bullshit, um, 15 minutes on your phone, 10 minutes on your phone, drawing, doodling, other shit, just pay attention while you're there, because you'll be able to chill more outside of class, right? You don't want to be scattered everywhere dabbling. You want to actually be on point with your shit. Because there was a time where I wasn't doing this. I was kind of like half into the class, half like not, you know, half like into like, you know, articles or something else. And I actually had to work harder outside of class than other kids. Like when I started hanging out with the smarter kids, I'm like, holy shit, these kids aren't really doing much and they're getting way better grades than I am. And I'm working like kind of hard, you know, I'm trying to read the book, uh, trying to like learn everything on my own and break down the information through the book on my own. And I actually ended up doing like kind of worse, you know, I'd get, I'd still get a good grade. Like I'd get like an 80 for studying, let's say like 12 hours, but they would get like a 93 from studying like, you know, five hours, four hours, you know, study two nights, two hours each, and they get a way better grade, because they were using their time in class wisely, participating, and not dabbling on their phone, bullshitting, uh, thinking about girls, and looking at fucking memes, and whatever, um, and, you know, don't, just don't, please don't wait for the, the day before to start studying, I can't stress that enough, okay, so, here, this is the meat of everything, I need some water, so here's how I actually studied, I actually looked up top performing uh, students, like, like there's seminars on, on studying on YouTube <laughs> that I looked up to learn how to study, like, Ivy League students, and, and you know, those, those kids who go to Yale, Brown, uh, Princeton, uh, they study differently than, like, normal kids, and the difference between a kid who's, who's a high-performing student and a kid who's not is it comes down to how they study. Uh, or a part of it, and, you know, the, the poor level kid, he thinks studying is doing, like, six hours in a row, I'm just gonna study six hours in a row, you know, my brain's gonna fucking become fatigued, and I'm just gonna try to hammer it out, hammering it out is so, it's just, like, the dumbest thing you can ever do, right, that's, like, having no rest days when you're working out, that's, like, just continually eating, 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 and not giving yourself a break to fucking digest the information, okay, Instead of hammering it out for six hours, what you need to do is do intervals of work and intervals of just chilling, okay? So I did two, I had two, two variations of these. I would do 30 minutes of work, 30 minutes hardcore studying immersion, you know, chapter four, if I had an exam from chapters one through eight, I would do, okay, half hour, I'm going to uh, look at the shit, read the shit, whatever, then I would chill for five minutes. Then I'd do another half hour, then I would chill for five minutes, then another half hour of hard concentrated work, then I would chill for five minutes, then another hour of hard concentrated work, then I'd chill for five minutes. I'd do like four of those and I'd just like relax and fucking do something else. You know, and like the other variation of that is doing like two hours of hardcore studying. Like I would have, there's an app called Pomodoro I used for this. So I would, you know, I would do two hours of just hardcore studying, then I'd do a 30 minute break. So I chill for 30 minutes, let my brain relax, let my brain digest the information so I don't burn out. Then I would do another hardcore two hours and then 30 minutes and I'd be chilling, okay? And I did that frequently, all right? And what's cool is you actually learn more in less time and you can actually go longer than most because you're not burning yourself out just trying to do six hours, okay? Just think of it like even, it's like drinking. Like, would you rather, if you just drink like 10 shots, you know, I'm not really a drinker anymore, but let's just say it's 10 o'clock p.m. and you're pre-gaming and you just drink like 12 shots, you're going to fuck up your night, okay? You're just going to black out. But let's say you drink two shots, chill, 
half hour, drink another two shots, chill half hour, hour, you know, drinking one shot. Like you can stay up the whole night because you, you give yourself intervals of, of, of breaks, you know, you're, you're spacing it out. It's the same thing when you're studying. Don't fucking study six hours straight and think you're going to get a, a productive study session because you're, you're, you're tiring yourself out. Okay. And don't study, don't study alone. Okay. Study with other people. Because it's like reading, like, if you study with different people, um, you get more done together, right? Here, let me give you a good story about this. I took Chem 108, okay? That's the second Chem. Not Intro Chem, the second one, the one quanti- quantitative analysis. I took that one. And there's something, there's a homework called, like, Smart Homework or whatever, and it was just asking you basic chemistry questions, and, you know, you had to problem solve them. And the thing is, Chem is kind of hard, and... Doing it alone would easily have taken me two hours, but what I would do is I would organize, you know, study sessions with everyone for the, for the, the chem homeworks, and we would all do them together, and it'd be done in 15 minutes, right, because one person knows how to answer one different question, and, you know, we all knew, we all had different strengths and weaknesses with the chemistry, and when together, it came out to be easier to be doing, and we all taught each other, and it just was just smoother, Right. And it's the same thing with studying for exams. If you guys are all together, you know, one person knows something better than someone else and they can explain it to everyone. We can all explain shit together and we can all get it done faster. You know, and some people are sick, some people are absent. So like they need the extra, uh, you know, notes and, and things taught to them because they missed the lecture anyway. So it's like studying with groups is dope because you have that advantage. Um, you know, prepare for exams the week before. So like instead of waiting... Like, what I would do is I would do, like, a week before, I would just start looking through things. I got the syllabus ready. I just know what chapters I need to know. And I'm kind of just, like, I'm not going hardcore yet. I'm just kind of looking at things. You know, every day I'm looking at things, seeing what I know, what I don't know, like, a week before. Like, let's say the test is on a Thursday. Uh, that Thursday prior, I'm just looking at shit. You know, Thursday, Friday, I look at shit a little bit. Saturday, I go out. Sunday, I just chill. Monday, I'm looking at a little bit more. And what's cool is once Tuesday hits, but I have this two-day rule, two days before the exam, that's when I go my hardest, not the night before, okay? I go my hardest studying two days before the exam. Why do I do that? Because if you're studying the night before, you know, your brain's going to be too tired. You're going to be too done. You're trying to cram everything, okay? I'd rather study two nights before as hard as fuck, go to sleep, uh, see how much I know on Wednesday. Um, you know, I chill on Wednesday, I'm pretty confident, I kind of know my shit, I get my full night's uh, rest, and then th- uh, Thursday morning, I review the shit, whatever, and I, I go through my flashcards, my note, my note cards, and just try to get a little bit more information, you know, that's how I would study for, for exams, a week before, you know, look over some shit, blah, 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 but not the night before, two nights before, that's when you go hard as fuck, and then in that morning, of the exam, you just study a little bit, look over shit, and then just compare your notes, that's how I did it, okay, don't wait the night before, it's stupid, um, I'm actually infamous, this is, I'm actually, this is, this is literally how I remember, I'm gonna, I'm literally, I don't like doing this, but I'm gonna give you my secret to remembering very complicated information, if I didn't do this, I definitely wouldn't have, have got this degree at all, okay, so what I did was, um, because in, in bio, there's a lot of complicated processes that are just impossible to remember um, without, for me at least, without using stories and using metaphors to real life, okay? And um, pretty much, like, I had a, all right, here's a good story. In molecular biology, okay, I had a class called molecular biology, and it was just about, like, uh, how, how DNA works, how DNA works and how molecules work and genes in, in, in your body, like, just, like, all the processes behind everything, and, um, for some reason, we had an exam, and I had to, um, no one had their notes with them, they're like, oh, shit, like, it was just inconvenient for everyone to get their notes, like, and they're like, oh, does anyone have their notes with you, and I'm like, oh, you know, I have my notes with me, and, um, at the time, I forgot I wrote my notes in metaphors, right, I would write, like, the, the, the sneaky protein, like if there's a protein that is a sneak, 
it, it like sneaks its way in there. I call it like the swiper no swiping protein. Like I, I did shit like that. That's how I operated. Or if there was something that was very like a bright protein that turned on something else, I would call it the the pervert protein because it likes to turn on other uh, <laughs> other things. Like that's how I pretty much learn things. So um, I didn't know my notes were like that. And I ended up printing, there were, I had a hundred pages of notes like this, and I actually ended up printing out copies for the whole class, right? And they, they're reading it like, oh, okay, Ron, thanks for the info. And literally they get to a page and they're like, yo, what, what is this trash so that I'm reading? What is this gibberish? And I talked about like a stable protein or a stable uh, confirmation of something being, uh, like, like, like the D I'm like, Oh, this protein wants the D so it can get stabilized. <laughs> like I wrote my notes like that in class. And when I tell you it was the most embarrassing thing that I've ever experienced, it was, <laughs> it was really embarrassing. But like, that's, but all jokes aside, that's literally how I used, um, metaphors to learn inform complicated information. So, you know, that is a mind hack. If you want to use it, I actually gave you some examples of things I did, uh, later on, which we'll talk about and like teach other students, you know, have someone you can teach in the class that way you can learn the information too. So like teach people during study sessions, teach people all the, all the shit and you'll be, you'll be set. Okay. So two things, just keep this in mind. If you can't explain it in your own words, you don't know it. And if you can't draw it in a picture either, if you can't like, like communicate it through diagrams or like however you learn, if you can't really like put on a piece of paper, like through a different modality you don't really know it, okay? So those just remember those two things. So here's an example of like a metaphor I would use. So a tautomer, it's pretty much a it's the definition right there, a constitutional isomer or organic compounds that readily interconvert by a chemical called tautomerization. So what happens is tautomerization changes the formation. It changes like the formation of uh that organic compound into a similar one, but it's not directly the same. But how I remembered it, especially during an exam, was I said it's like sleeping with your girlfriend and then trying to sleep with a cousin. You know, they look the same, but they're not really the same. You know, and the thing with what's genius about this is it sounds very outrageous and preposterous, but when you're stressed out and you're kind of in that fear mode and in that scarcity mode and that, you know, I'm, I'm under a fixed time, I need to get good grades, I'm nervous, you know, you're kind of just trying to get a good grade on the exam, you know, your adrenaline's pumping and all that shit, uh, it's going to be easier for you to remember that and laugh, like, you know, talking about, oh yeah, that girlfriend story, then remembering uh, constitutional isomers or organic compounds, like all that shit. It's going to be easier to remember the girlfriend thing. So that's why I do that. I'm like, Tautomer. I bet you now, next time you see the word Tautomer, you're going to think, hey, isn't that something about a girlfriend and cousin? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that kid. It's the thing that kid said. And a lot of people have come, come to me and they're like, dude, you know, that fucking stupid story when I was taking the exam, I kept remembering the, the, the story about the fucking girlfriend and the cousin. And that helped me actually get the problem right. So, like, it does work. You know, I use another one. Chaperone proteins um, and, like, strippers. Uh, the chaperone protein, it, it pretty much, like, helps the protein, like, fold and make sure, like, nothing gets in the way to fuck it up from forming. Um, that's my, that's Ron's definition of the chaperone protein. But, you know, uh, I like to use, I use strippers and bouncers. I'm like, okay, the strippers are the, are the, are the are what's going on and the chaperone proteins are pretty much the bouncers making sure the stripper gets paid making sure the stripper uh does her job without getting fucking uh attacked by the creeps paying her money or, or the guys you know the lonely men who are giving her money so you know that's that's another one i used okay so they're outrageous but they work trust me try using them okay this is probably one of the most important things I can tell you, not only in college, but in life as well. And that is, it's a big mind fuck. okay? You have to know what the other person wants. It doesn't matter about the standard. It matters about the, what the other person wants. If you apply to any job interview, every, every boss is different. You have to know what the boss wants for the employees at that place. You know, Bill Gates doesn't have that Apple atmosphere and apple doesn't have that 
um, Google atmosphere. You know, everybody has a different culture. So it's like same thing with the professor. When the professor gives you an exam, it doesn't matter everything you know. It matters. You have to convey that information in the way that the professor wants it to be conveyed. Okay, and it's kind of it's kind of weird, but like let me explain this deeper. I had a I had a professor. Okay, uh, he taught. Let's just say he taught this crocodile class. Let's call it crocodile class. And I love this dude because he's the one who really got me into this, this mindset of of knowing what they want. And he doesn't. He probably doesn't even know that he did this, but he really did influence just the way I look at things now. Um, he would throw give you a quiz. Okay, the quiz would be. Uh, a four question quiz and it'd be either yes or no for each question so it's either you knew it or you don't and that quiz was actually on like you know a good 40 60 slides and I got a 50 on that quiz because you know the things I studied weren't really something he would pick and I'm like dude this is not fair like this you only have one quiz in the class and I fit I fucking failed it I don't even have a second chance it sucks he's like dude I don't know what to tell you you know, same thing for the exam. He would give you an exam, and the exam would be 200 slides, and he would he would exam you only on, like, 40 of the slides. And I'm like, dude, like, you can't do that. I spent all this time trying to learn every single slide, and you only doing, you know, an exam on 40 slides. He's like, well, that's just how I do things. Sorry. And he would mark off points when I would try to explain things. Like, I understood the concepts in my own way. So I would try to explain in my own way to him, and he'd be like, dude, like, this is half off. And I'm like, why is this guy like that? It's because I wasn't, I didn't know what he wanted. You know, he likes his, his questions answered in direct definitions that he gives you in class. You know, he wants it word for word. And I didn't understand that. You know, he, he only want, he really wants you to know, uh, just how kidneys work instead of like animal piss, right? He didn't, he doesn't care if you know about animal piss and like the, how hot their piss is. You know, he was really more concerned with how kidneys work and if you if you were aware of that, you know. So, and this is what a lot of professors, like, a lot, I, had, I had different professors who, who liked, like, drawings. They liked diagrams and, and they liked your own way of looking at it. They liked the way you like to describe it. I have some professors who just want it, you know, just, just to make enough sense. You know, they want it just like that and they want more images. They want you to draw the cycles, the cell cycle. If it's like the cell cycle or if it's something that's diagram related, they want you to draw the diagram. I had, I had professors like that. Then there's professors who just want your straight interpretation of it, like how you view it in a way that's not really related to science, in a way of, of just like how you how you break down the info. Some professors actually want you to explain how you break, broke down that information and, and bring out facts from the readings and from the lecture, you know, so you need to know how your professor works and that's how you convey the info. So I ended up withdrawing from that class. I took that class again. Uh, it was still difficult at first, but I ended up getting 90s, 95s, 100s on everything because I understood, uh, especially towards the end, what kind of professor he was, what kind of information he wanted to read, what kind of, um, you know, what kind of knowledge he was into. So you know, just remember that, and like, if, if you don't, if you have a hard time getting it, just look at their quizzes, look at their homeworks, just look at their style, and even talk to them about it, you know, go to their office hours, you know, poke at them, hey, uh, what do you think about this, you know, just talk, talk to them more about it, and they'll give you a little insight into how they grade, how they uh, want the information portrayed to them, okay, so, you know, this is a huge one, you got to track your grades, I actually track my grades in a spreadsheet before I didn't do that. Uh, difference between like a poor level kid and a kid who's like doing like really well in academia is he knows his grade. You, you can talk to him right now. He knows what he has. He's like, dude, I got a 93.3 right now. Uh, you know, second, third weekend, like this kid, the kids know their grades every second of the fucking semester. They know what they have, what they're going to have, what they need to get in order to get what they have because they're, they're trying to get into medical school and they need that 3.5. So they trust me, they're measuring their grades. So what I would do is I, I measured every homework, every quiz and every exam, and I would know what grade I would get easily, uh, for the final everything, I I knew pretty much it can be four weeks into the semester, and I know what I'm gonna what I'm gonna uh, leave the class with. You know what I mean? And that's that's kind of liberating. You know, when you have all that spread documented in a spreadsheet, 
you don't really have anxiety because you know that you'll still get an A, even if you get an 80. You'll know the lowest grade you need to get to get an A minus, and like you'll have all that math out. And that's pretty cool. I'll show you guys actually my spreadsheet that I use to pass, and um, hopefully you can make your own. Okay, so like that's really cool. I also did that to, to, to measure my GPA too, which you can do as well. So use this spreadsheet, okay? Fight for every point, fight for every quiz point, every homework point, every extra credit point. Just fight for every point. That way it's easier for you when you're taking your exam. You can you have a little bit of room to fuck up and you can still get a decent grade. You can still get a really good grade. And use negative social pressure to help you, okay? And that's like being friends with like that buddy Chris talked about earlier. Just be friends with really, 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 really smart kids in the class. That way, you know, they push you to get better grades as well. You know, you get a better grade than them. You know, you got a 92, they got an 84. They're going to work harder to try to beat you, and it becomes friendly competition. You know, he's like, hey, what'd you get? I'm like, oh, what'd you get? He's like, oh, I got I got a 91. And you're like, fuck, I got an 89. And he's like, oh, I, like, damn, dude. You know what I mean? It's kind of like an ego thing, but in a healthy way because it helps you both uh, just get better grades. And they all do it. Trust me. They People love to compare um, grades, so use that to your advantage, Okay. So, like, here's me, um, and this is a genetics class. I went from being tutored to tutoring, like, 20-plus students just just from the, pat the things I'm talking to you about right now. Um, you know, it's just pretty cool to, to be able to, to actually start helping other people as opposed to just being, like, helpless and fucking, you know, sitting in the back with my little furry hat with, like, texting girls. You know, it, it's cool to, to actually tutor other kids, and they see you more as a leader in terms of the information than this fucking kid, you know? So that's that's just really what I did. And the last thing that I really want to stress, because a lot of people fuck this one up, is you need to know how to have fun. Please don't, don't stop having fun because your life is all about work and no play. Because you're actually counterproductive. It's actually hurting you more than helping you, okay? I always made sure I went out every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, because that's what I like to do. So I always made time for it, you know, doesn't matter exam or not, because at the end of the day, if you structure your time right, doesn't matter, you know, it's not about working harder, it's about working smarter, like schedule free time, have fun, you know, go out with your friends, like live your life, okay, don't stress out over everything because, you know, it's not worth it, you know, take, take your shit seriously while you're in class and then when you're out of class, do whatever you want to do. Right. You can you can do this without doing too much. Right. You just need to do the right things. It's not about doing everything right. I mean, I don't take that back. It's just just it's all about doing the right things. So do the right things. Right. That's all you need to do. So while you're in class, be in class. And when you're out, you can just do whatever you want. OK. And just like that's just that's it. You know, just make sure you have a good life. Have fun. You know, have time to, like, Netflix and chill if you want to Netflix and chill. If you want to hit up the club, have fun to do that. You know, you want to hang out with your friends. Have fun to do cool shit that you like doing and be you. But at the same time, make sure you have your professional life handled, okay? So that's it. You know, Ron, you know, that's who I am. Uh, I also got this little book club coming out. It's going to be pretty cool. It's just book summaries. Like, I like to read a lot. You guys know that. Book summaries from the best books ever. You know, books like Influence, books like How to Win Friends and Influence People, Evolutionary Psychology. I know a lot of you guys don't really have time to read them, so what I'm going to be doing is just making book summaries just about, you know, these books, quick 15-minute summaries, uh, video summaries, and you guys can just read the Evernote. I'm probably going to put an Evernote link to the bottom of the books, the book videos, and you can just you can just read those and see what I have to say. Um, for what I thought was like the meat of the book, you know. Instead of reading 200 pages of fluff, I just cut out you know, the top 10 things I learned, the meat of the book, the lessons, and you can just read those, okay? So there's probably going to be a link to that somewhere in this video. I don't know where, but I'll figure it out. But in the meantime, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, subscribe. Definitely comment below on any suggestions on what helped you or what you took from this that you really liked. And, you know, thanks once again.